So verses 22 through 23, Jesus has spoken before about being rejected. But this time he's adding the element of betrayal. And again, he said that he would be killed and that he would rise on the third day. Again, he is giving them the assurance of victory. But the disciples always seem to miss the point. They were so greatly distressed about the Lord talking about his death that they didn't rejoice in the fact that he was going to be raised. That just wasn't real to them. The disciples were slow to understand, and they were the ones with Jesus. They saw his miracles, and they still had difficulty understanding. Here's a word of encouragement. Uh, don't repress your doubts or questions as if they're wicked because you just need to talk about them. We're no different than the disciples. Um, and when you don't have all the answers, look to Jesus for help and direction. And I know uh, you have priests and preachers and, and good Christian friends but in the end, you make sure that um, you turn it over to Jesus. Jesus is going to reveal what he wants you to know. And when you're ready to accept it and truly believe it, you get your answer. Now, Peter finds the coin in the fish's mouth. We're going to go to the miracle here in verse 24. The tax collectors came to Peter, and they asked if his teacher would be paying the temple tax. <clears throat> you know, to refuse would um, indicate a desire to separate the religious community. All Jewish males, 20 and above, had to pay an annual temple tax. Exodus 30, 11 through 16. And the money went for public sacrifices upkeep of the temple, and then if any was left over, it would be used for upkeep of Jerusalem. Enormous sums of money came in uh, from places such as Egypt and where there were maybe eight or 10 million Jews. You know, taxes were even collected from Jewish males that lived in Palestine. The collectors probably came to Peter because he was the head of the household or a homeowner in Capernaum. That's where Peter's home was. So in verse 25 through 26, what do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth take toil or tribute? From their children or from others? Jesus used this situation to emphasize his kingly role. And just as kings pay no taxes and collect none from their families, Jesus the king owed no temple tax. But Jesus supplied the tax payment for both himself and Peter. And rather than offend those who didn't understand his kingship, his method of getting the tax money was a bit novel, uh, but it in it, he demonstrates that he has recovered all that Adam lost and that all creatures were obedient to him. The fish, as well as Peter, followed his command. And Jesus taught the disciples that at times it would be important to submit for the sake of their witness. That's Romans 13, 1 through 7, Timothy 2, 1 through 3, Titus 3, 1 through 3, and, and 8, and then 1 Peter 2, 13 through 17. Now, although Jesus supplied the tax money 
Peter had to go get it. And there's a principle right here. <clears throat> All that we have comes to us from God, pardon me, from God's supply, but we must be active in the process. That's a long one, but here you are. All that we have comes to us from God's supply, but we must be active in the process. All that we have comes to us from God's supply, but we must be active in the process.